Hello students, welcome to the next lecture on the real analysis. Today, I will explain you the MN tests which are used for finding the uniform convergence. Myself, Dr. Harishkar, you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the various lecture under the playlist of real analysis. Now, what we have discussed in our last lectures, we have covered the topic of the pointwise convergence, which is available at my YouTube channel. Also, we have defined the Cauchy criteria, various examples of the pointwise convergence. All you can find under the playlist of real analysis and you can see in this lectures. Apart from them, we have described there are the two methods to check for the sequence of the function fn to be uniform convergent or not. The first method is by using the definition which we have already learned in our last lectures. That is examples of the uniform convergence and the concept of the uniform convergence. You must watch about my these lectures which are available under the playlist and you can see all these lectures at, at this playlist. Now, in this today's lecture, I will explain you how the MN tests are useful for finding the uniform convergent of the sequence. So what is the statement of the uniform MN test for the uniform convergent? If you have the sequence of the function Fn, which are defined on the domain A, which is a subset of the R, such that Fnx converges to the Fx pointwise. And I assume Mn is my supremum of Fx minus F. Then Fn converges to the F uniformly if and only if this Mn will if this Mn will converges to the zero as an approach is infinite. Now you can see that whenever Fn converges to the F uniformly, the result is called for if and only if. Proof is a very, very simple. Let Fn converges to the F uniformly on this. Then this is your target to prove F Mn converges to the zero. So if Fn converges to the F uniformly, what does it mean? So therefore, by the definition of the uniform convergent, for a given epsilon greater than zero, there exists a positive integer M such that Fnx minus Fx less than epsilon. Whenever fnx minus fx less than epsilon if you take the supremum over the, all the domain then definitely this quantity is also less than of the epsilon because we are taken the supremum fine for all n greater than or equal to m at this case then what is the definition of the supremum of the fn it is called as mn which is less than of epsilon fine can i write this quantity as mn minus 0 is less than epsilon, what does it implies? Mn converges to the 0 as n approaches infinite. Conversely, I can assume that Mn approaches 0 as n approaches infinity. What is Mn? That means supremum over the collection of all those x in the domain so that fnx minus fx is less than epsilon or goes to the zero when n approaches infinity. Fine. Or you can take it as a mn because mn is a sequence of the functions which is a positive part because supremum is always my this because I have taken as the absolute value so it is a positive number. So this implies supremum of x belongs to the a fnx is less than epsilon. Whenever supremum is less than of something then we can say that each individual term is also less than epsilon for all x n greater than equal to m for all x belongs to the a. What does it mean? So by the definition of the sequence of the function, the uniform convergent, this converges uniform. And that's the proof of this simple mn test. I hope you can like and comment on this video. Now, I will explain you with the certain examples how this method will work. Look at that. Let fn is a sequence which are defined on the open interval minus 1 to close interval 1, defined by this. Then what is the meaning of the first part? That means they are talking about the pointwise convergent and second they are talking about the uniform convergent. If you already watched my this previous lecture examples of the uniform convergent, then I have already explained the same example. I have already solved the same example in my previous lecture of the uniform convergent. So now 
I can solve the same example by using the MN test. What is the definition of the point-wise convergent? We have to find the limit of the FNX. Whether this limit exists, then we can say that it's a point-wise, otherwise not. Now, clearly say, if I start with this case, because my domain is open interval minus one to close interval one. So what will happen if X is equal to one, first case? Your FNX will be one. So therefore, what is the value of the FX? limit of the fnx as n approaches infinity which is also my one so therefore whenever x is equal to one the answer is one fine now second case whenever x belongs to the open interval then this value will be my x raised to power n so therefore what is the limit of the fx limit of the fnx as n approaches infinity now since mod of the x is less than 1 in this domain, so this limit will be my 0. Therefore, the this limit is existence. Hence, fnx converges to this f point wise. Now, for the uniform convergence, we can apply the MN test. So our target is to find this number. fnx minus fx. Now since we have the two different cases, so I can start with the two cases. Firstly, when x is equal to 1, what is my fnx minus fx? So clearly say, what is the fnx when x is equal to 1? fnx when x is equal to 1 is 1. What is the fx when x is equal to 1? 1, which is 0. And whenever x lies between minus 1 to 1, what is this number is? xn minus 0. So therefore, I can take the two cases. Whenever x is 1, the answer is 0 and so on. Now, can you find the supremum of this quantity over the domain? So clearly say the supremum is occurring at x is equal to 1. So therefore, the answer is 1. Now clearly say this limit does not go to the 0 as n approaches infinity. Therefore, this sequence of the function is not uniform convergent by m -end. Look at this another one. Show that 0 is the point of non-uniform convergent. What is the meaning of the non-uniform convergent? That means at the point x is equal to 0, fnx does not converge to the f uniformly. But always remember student, whenever we are talking about the uniform convergent, your target is to firstly check about the point-wise convergent. If you prove that it is not point-wise convergent, if it is not point-wise convergent, then this implies it is not uniform convergent. Fine. Now, for the point-wise convergent, target is my this case. Clearly say, you have the two cases because if x is 0, the answer is 0. If x is my non-zero, then this is my non-zero. Hence, you have the two cases. If x is zero and x is my non-zero. Fine. If x is zero, what is the value of the fnx? Clearly say fnx will be my zero. Then what is my fx? The limit of the fnx is my zero. Fine. Whenever x is my non-zero, fnx is my this case. So what is my fx? That is limit n approaches infinity of nx or you can simply say limit n approaches infinity nx e raised to power minus nx square. If you take as n approaches infinity, this is infinity e raised to power minus infinity. That's a zero. So that's an indetermined form. So one, once it's an indetermined form, I can convert into the, this is an infinity by infinity form. Once it's an infinity by infinity form, I can apply the allopator rule. So I can differentiate this with respect to the n. So it is a nx square into x square. So what is the limit as n approaches infinity? This value will go to the 0 because x is my non 0. So what is the meaning of that? In the both the cases, that means your fx when x is equal to 0, answer is 0. When x is my non 0, answer is also 0. Or you can say f of x is my 0 for all x belongs to the domain. Hence, 
एफ एन एक्स कन्वर्ज इज द जीरो पॉइंट नाउ योर टारगेट इज टू फाइंड द सुप्रीम सो आई माई टारगेट इज टू फर्स्टली फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ एफ एन एक्स माइनस एफ एक्स वट इज एफ एन एक्स एफ एन एक्स इज माई एन एक्स ई रेज टू पावर माइनस एन एक्स स्केयर माइनस जीरो सो दैट मीन्स इट इज माई एन एन एक्स नाउ हाउ यू कैन फाइंड द सुप्रीम दैट्स अगेन वेरी सिंपल आई कोड दिस क्वान्टिटी इज माई सेव वाई फाइन देन योर टारगेट इज टू फाइंड द मैक्सिमम ऑफ दिस हाउ यू कैन फाइंड द मैक्सिमम यू कैन टेक द फर्स्ट डेरिवेटिव जीरो सेकेंड डेरिवेटिव टू बी लेस देन जीरो सो कैन यू फाइंड द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ दिस फंक्शन सो वाई डैश विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दी एक्स सो एन इज माई कॉन्स्टेंट आई कैन अप्लाई द फर्स्ट डेरिवेटिव रूल प्रोडक्ट फर्स्ट फंक्शन प्लस एक्स e raised to power minus n x square into minus 2 n x so clearly say i can take an e raised to power minus n x square common then the remaining term is minus 2 n x square fine now for the maximum and minima how you can find the maximum and minima condition that means the first derivative to be zero so if you take the first derivative zero n can never be zero Exponential term can never be zero, so the value of the x will be my plus minus one over root two n. Fine. Now, out of the plus or minus term, which one is the maximum? There are the two methods. The first method is you can find the second derivative and check at these points whether it is less than zero or not. But you can see that it is sometimes it is difficult for you to find the second derivative. Then I will tell you the second methods. That is called as the derivative test. What is the meaning of that derivative test? I hope you all remember that. If I called any point, say x naught, this point is said to be the maxima if it changes the sign from positive to negative. If it changes the sign from negative to the positive, then we call as the point x naught is my minima. So in that case. i can draw the two tables first one is corresponding to the positive sign and second is corresponding to the negative sign so y dash of this sign now how you can check about the sign there is a y dash where is a y dash this is my y dash fine now i will tell you the simple shortcut tricks how you can check about the sign within the one second look at that this number is always positive fine because whatever the value of the n n may be the 1000 and may be the 1 lakh it is always my positive fine so that means zero is lies somewhere here fine so once x is my zero what is the value of this it is my positive so that means this number is my positive and this number is by any number say let's say positive number 0 1 2 3 so let's say it's my 21 if x is my 21 this number will be my negative so that means the signs are from positive to negative on the other hand corresponding to the second case when it is minus 1 by root n this is my y dash sign so where is the zero because this number is my negative so zero is lies somewhere here and corresponding to this zero the value is my positive so this number will be my positive and whenever x is my negative say minus 7 so this number will be my positive it's negative so this number is my negative what is the meaning of that this value will give you the maximum because it changes the sign from the positive to negative and the negative sign will give you the minimum because it changes the sign from negative to positive so at the positive point a y dash changes the sign from positive to negative therefore by using the first derivative test we can say the maximum occurring at x is equal to plus 1 by root 2 and i can substitute this value of x in this mn value so what is the value of the mn so it's a n x value will be my 1 by root 2 n e raised to power minus n x square will be minus 1 over root 1 by 2 n fine so you can see n will be cancel out it's a minus half now clearly say i can return this number is root n root 2 e raised to power minus half does it goes to the zero as n approaches infinity no because it goes to the infinity hence this limit that is mn does not goes to the zero by mn test fn is not uniform convergent 
Now, how you can prove the point is non-uniform convergent? Because we have obtained the point of x clearly say which goes to the zero as n approaches infinity and it's also the non-uniform convergent. Therefore, x is equal to zero is my non-uniform convergent. Always remember student, you always taken this concept instead of finding the second derivative because second derivative takes some times. So you always use the sign of the first derivative test. Look at one more example. Show that the sequence is uniform convergent. Fine. Again, always remember your first target is to check the pointwise convergent. Can you find the pointwise convergent? What is the limit of n approaches infinity of sine 1 by root n? So when n approaches 0 into bounded function, fine. So 0 into bounded function is my 0 for all x. Therefore, fn converges to the 0 pointwise. Fine. Now second is, remember student, if it is not a point wise, then it is not uniform convergent, fine. But if it is a point wise, then it may or may not be the uniform convergent. How you can find the supremum of this? So firstly, I can find this value, supremum of all those x from 0 to 2 pi. fnx, this number, fx is my 0. So this number is sine nx divided by root n, fine. Now, can you find the supremum of this? Again, if you consider this value is my y sine nx divided by root n, then you can find the first derivative 0 and then use the derivative test. But because it's a sine and cosine functions, then how you can find the maximum value of this? We all know sine of the x, the maximum value is occurring at on the interval a comma b. Or what is the period of this? The period of this is my 2 pi. What is the period of sine alpha x? The period of sine alpha x will be 2 pi over alpha. Now, can you find the value of the 0 to 2 pi? What is the value? Maximum value is occurring at pi over 2. Fine, because 0 is a 0, 2 pi is a 0. Maximum value occurring at pi by 2. And since it is multiplied by n, so the maximum value is occurring at pi over 2n. So you can see since sin x has a maximum value at 1 and which is occurring at pi over 2n. So therefore I can substitute this value of the x in this equation. What is my mn? It's a sine pi over 2 1 divided by root n and clearly say it goes to the 0 as n approaches infinity. So once mn goes to the 0, therefore by mn test the sequence of the function fn converges to the f uniform. Fine. Remember student, you can use the first derivative 0 and then find the second derivative or the first derivative test. For more detail about this, uh, for more detail about this concept, how you can find this concept, I will explain you again with the help of the 10 more examples in our next lecture so that you can understand the concept of the first derivative test with the help of this more example. You can watch this more examples on the MN test so that you can understand this lecture more deeply. I hope you can like, share and comment on this video and don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel. Best of luck students, always happiness.